that I'll fly away one yeah. glad day, ain't you? Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. I've said it a bunch of times, but I'll say it probably a bunch more, that uh, the thing is, only a Christian can really sing that song. Yeah, right. A lost person, I guess, could sing it, but they couldn't mean it. Amen. Because uh, it ain't a hallelujah day when you die if you're not saved. Amen. But if a man's saved, ladies saved, boy, boy or girl are saved, I tell you, when we leave this world, we leave them to a better place. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. I've heard people say, well, they went to a better place. But, man, we, we saved people are really going to a better place. Yeah. Amen. 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 Boy, it's good to be at church. And, uh, man, I enjoyed this morning. Amen. 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 And, uh, man, I'm like, I, like we said this morning, I'm like, I'm like Jacob. Amen. Jacob became Esau by deception. But I, but I got in on the blessings through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. You got in Christ, you got blessed. Amen. And, uh, man, I enjoyed this morning looking at Genesis 27. And I'm looking forward tonight getting in the book of James again tonight. Amen. And I've been enjoying that study. Ask the Lord to help us. Amen. Just to, just to be a help to everybody that's here. Amen. But it's been good to be been good to be at God's house this morning. Good to be at God's house tonight. Amen. Let me give you a couple announcements. I'll just give you two tonight. I won't give you. Well, I'll just give you a couple. I won't give you many. Amen. I won't give you as many this morning. Uh, amen. You might you might say, well, Brother John, you gave us some many this morning. Well, just hold on. I won't give you as many tonight. Amen. <laughs> Try to give you as many. But anyway, Faith Community Baptist Church having a youth rally September 9th. And we're taking all the youth. But any adults want to go, we'd love to have you go to it. It's going to be good. And then camp meeting here at church will be September 11th through 15th. September 11th through 15th, we got camp meeting. Uh, every night, we're going to have Steve Pope. He'll be preaching every night. If you've never heard Brother Pope, he's a great preacher. I promise you, you'll enjoy hearing Brother Pope. Uh, I know that a lot, of the, a lot of those who are married couples, they'd heard Brother, they'd heard Brother Pope preach or teach, really not really preach, but teach during the, uh, teach during the marriage, uh, marriage, what we call, what we call that? Valentine's Day. Yeah, Valentine's Day. They ended up making it something else because they waited so long to do it. But anyway, everybody got, at that time, everybody got COVID and all kinds of good stuff. But anyway, so we had to put it off. But I don't know what we call it. I think couples night out, so we ended up calling it. But anyway, he done a great job at that. And then he's, uh, like I say, he's going to preach every night. Curtis Ponder preached Tuesday morning through Friday morning. And so we'll say Sisloff. And uh, Jeremy Simpson, or Jeremiah Simpson will be singing. Uh, the uh, the uh, Sislaw family will be singing. Um, i trying to think who all is singing. A bunch of people singing. Amen. There's a Narrow Road's going to be singing. Um, Butcher family will be singing. And uh, the uh, Maple Springs Baptist Youth Choir will be singing. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I mean, you won't miss it. September 11th through 15th. Just be praying about that. Lord bless youth camp. And uh, then also, as far as a church wide church-wide uh, activity we're doing is a Billy Graham Library on October 7th. They mass church-wide. So anybody that wants to go, Billy Graham Library, again, it'll be free. The only money you got brings for food and souvenirs. Amen. So it's going to be a lot of, good, a lot of good time there. We'll have a lot of fun and uh, look forward to doing that with you. Amen. So I hope everybody go. If everybody can go and love to see you at it. Amen. We'll have a good time together. Amen. And, uh, man, I, I, I believe getting the gospel out is important. And I believe at that point, at one point, at, majority of Billy Graham's life he believed that also amen the yeah. Lord used him and to get the gospel out and share the gospel with many people amen so let's just pray the Lord pray the Lord bless tonight pray a meet with us brother Randy if you can help us take up offering if you would brother amen I'm gonna get brother Mike you, or brother Mike you come on and help us take up offering double duty brother or brother John either one whichever one y'all come on amen <laughs> don't put twice as much on you didn't brother sorry <laughs> you pray for us too brother hold on
Amen. Well, I enjoyed that, didn't you? Amen. Thank God he's still on the throne. Amen. In the Old Testament, you know, find about David, his enemies asked him, said, uh, where's the Lord? David, David didn't say it in, in those words, but I tell you, if, if he said it like we say it in our day, we're still exactly where he's always been. He's on the throne. Amen. He's where he's always been. Amen. He is not too. Amen. Thank God I'm saved. I am too. Amen. Thank the Lord I'm saved. Amen. Sung. I said, would you get me some water? <laughs> amen. Say so, amen, Brother Tony. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Amen. She's a good lady. God bless you, Miss Tim. You're a good lady. Amen. But James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Thank you, brother. I about forgot. Amen. Well, it's good to be at church. Appreciate his family being here tonight. Amen. Glad, glad to see all of them tonight. Appreciate them. Amen. Brother, I was trying to remember. I know. I think your wife's a nurse, and I was trying to remember what 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 you do for a living, brother. What was EMT work? Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, you. I was trying to. Oh, trooper. I, well, I, I thought that kind of. But I thought I was wrong for some reason. You're a trooper, amen. Well, we got two troopers at church tonight. Everybody better be careful, even. Amen. No, I'm just kidding, brother. Just kidding. Amen. Amen. Well. So say we got we got a nurse here, so if somebody gets sick, everybody's gonna be all right. And we got two troopers here. If anybody gets out of line, y'all help me, all right? <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. Amen. Amen. We're glad to have y'all though. Appreciate y'all. Glad you're here. Amen. Thank y'all for being here with us tonight. Amen. And uh, appreciate the Lord meeting with us tonight already. Amen. Uh, amen. Let's be in prayer for those we got. We got a couple that's just not not feeling well today. I know uh, Blue Randy and uh, Miss Gracie, both of them, said they just wasn't feeling well today. They texted me earlier and said that, and then uh, I know Miss Angela, she's been hurting throughout the day. Uh, she's just sits beside Miss Dorothy. That's why I pointed you, Miss Dorothy. But, um, you know, that's a, 
Uh, let's pray the Lord help her with her pain. She get to feeling better. Brother John and Miss Amanda's out traveling. They're going, to, they're going up to the mountains, spend a little bit of time together. So let's just pray for all those who, who wasn't able to be here tonight. Pray the Lord help those who are not feeling well, they get to feeling better. Amen. And uh, Miss Dorothy, I said your name, but uh, we was talking about Brother, Mike, Brother uh, Wayne earlier, Brother Mike, and I, I said, Brother Wayne was such a blessing. Amen. Such a good man. Amen. And uh, I tell you, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know that many, I, I don't know that we ever had testimony time where he didn't just jump up and testify every single time. Amen. Uh, he's always stood up and said something. Amen. And uh, he was just such a blessing. Amen. Amen. I, could, I, saw, I, I had to tell you that, Miss Dorothy. We was talking about that earlier. He was such a blessing, such a, such a good spirit, such a good man, and thankful for him. I, I was thinking about the day, thinking about Jesse. Uh, Je about Jesse Josie. I mean, I remember every time he'd leave church, he would go back there to the back, and I'd say, Brother, Brother Jesse, Lord's good, ain't he? I'd, and most time I'd say it because I know what he's going to say back. He'd say, oh, He's better than that. Yeah. He's better than that. Every, every time that's the way he'd say, Lord's good, ain't he? Brother, he'd say, Yes, sir. He's better than that. Amen. Yeah. And I agree, don't you? He's better than that. Yeah. He's better than that. Amen. And uh, man, I, you go think about stuff like that, it'd just overwhelm your heart. I'm thankful for the people of God, thankful yeah. for the church. Amen. And church ain't the building. Church is not the building. Church is the people that make up the building. Amen. And we're the body of Christ, the building of Christ, the battalion of Christ. We're the soldiers for Christ. Amen. Together. Same army. Amen. Same army. Boy, thank God for being in his army. But uh, James chapter 2 and verse number 1, and I'll try to preach to you and uh, give what the Lord has for us tonight. And you just pray for him. Pray, Lord, help me be a help to, you, to all of us tonight. I, I won't be honest with you. I'm, I'm preaching, but I want God to deal with me tonight. I want God to work on my heart tonight. And uh, I'll be honest with you, these studies on Sunday night's really been dealing with my heart uh, because I'm not where I ought to be. Amen. Uh, if you want a lion preacher, go watch Joe Olstein. Amen. You didn't come to watch a lion preacher. Amen. Uh, you come to hear a truthful preacher. At least I hope I, I'm not trying to be anyway. Amen. I want to be a truthful preacher. Uh, but listen, at the same time, I'll be honest with you, and I think all of us could be honest together. We're not where we ought to be tonight. Nobody in here has, has matured to the place they could say, boy, I don't need to grow no more in the Lord. Boy, and I've grown as much as a man or a lady can grow. I, you can't grow any more than what I've grown. Nobody plateaus in growth. Nobody. Unless they've decided to on their own to plateau, but not according to Scripture. Amen. None of us got to the place we're supposed to be. Amen. And we've been looking, we've been looking at it on every, every Sunday night on this one, this one statement or this one question. How to tell, or one statement, like I said, how, how to tell if you are maturing as a Christian. How to tell if you are maturing as a Christian. And I believe James answers this. James will let you know if you're really growing in the Lord like you should, and, and if I'm, if I, like I should, or if we're not, if we're missing it. But uh, how to tell if you are maturing as a Christian. We've looked at already uh, through James chapter 1, we've seen three things already. We saw how do you, how do you deal with trials in the first section of Scripture there. And, and, and listen, how do you deal with, how you deal with problems tells what kind of maturity level you have as a Christian. Amen. Uh, but then we talked about how do you deal with temptation when the devil and the flesh and the world put something in front of you to bait you and entice you. Uh, do you fail, you fail and, and go after that sin? Or have you learned how to, hurt, learned how to endure temptation and honor the Lord? Amen. Well, I tell you, we, everybody in here has failed to temptation at some point in time. Uh, but the truth is, if me and you mature, we'll learn how to not fail the next time. Amen. In fact, I'll give you scripture on that. The Bible said that the just man falleth seven times, but he riseth up again. It's interesting he put a number on that. You know why it don't say eight? Because evidently after seven times of falling in the same sin, he learned how not to fall the eighth time. Amen. And boy, I tell you this, it'd be good if we learned how not to fall the next time. Mature, good enough that we don't mess up again. Amen. Again, I know we're not perfect, but I know this, we can be a whole lot closer to the Lord than what me and you both are. Amen. 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 Not only we find, we, we looked at how, how you deal with trials, tells us, uh, how, how, tells us how mature you are as a Christian. How do you deal with temptation? Tells, you how, tells me and you how mature you are as a Christian. But then we looked at how do you deal with the Bible? If you just read the Bible and walk back out of church and walk right, stand right back up from reading the Word of God after the Lord has showed you you're missing it in some areas and you go right along your way with the same problem without letting God deal with it, that's how to mess up. But if me and you, be the, if we're going to be mature, we're going to have to read the Word of God and change the things that God shows us. Change the things that the Lord shows us. But not only that, we, we, tonight we're going to look at something something different, but... Right here in James 2, 
along the same lines of maturity. We're going to stay there the entire book of James. But tonight we'll look at this. How do you deal with people? How do you deal with people? And uh, boy, I heard a preacher say one time, said pastoring would be wonderful if it wasn't, wonderful if it wasn't for people. <laughs> Some of y'all feel like when you go to work, boy, work would be great if it wasn't for people. Amen. Hey, but can I tell you this? People is what makes pastoring great in the first place. Amen. Thank God for getting to pastor people. Amen. And listen, if you work at a job somewhere, hey, listen, thank the Lord you get to work around people. Amen. People's what makes life valuable. Amen. I think the Lord does first of all, but thank the Lord for people. Amen. Don't ever get the idea that you need to isolate yourself from the whole world because ain't nobody worth talking to. Amen. You ever run into anybody like that? They don't talk to anybody. They, they snub everybody because nobody, nobody is worthy enough. To hear them speak about anything, really. Lord help us. Anyway, we're we about to get in the message. We ain't got there yet. But anyway, verse number one. It said, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. If you look up that word respect of persons, it means the same thing as partiality, favoritism. We talked about this morning that we looked at Jacob and we looked at Esau. Esau was, was Isaac's favorite. Jacob was Rebecca's favorite. Boy, you make you cause problems when you have favorites. Amen. Right. Hey, you can cause problems in the church having favorites. Yeah. Right. Hey, Amen. I, I love everybody at church, but I can't hang around one individual the entire time I go to church. Amen. Right. 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 Hey, I love you to death, but I let you say, Brother John, you, you, you're an individual. I know I am, but I'm your pastor. Yeah. Pastor's got to be a pastor to everybody in the building. Yeah, right. Amen. I can't just be a pastor to one person. I ain't pastor to everybody. Amen. One man told me the other day, he said about a preacher, and he, wasn't, he really wasn't being, he wasn't being uh, rude. He was just saying, you know, he's just not very approachable. And, and he wasn't bashing. I don't even tell you, I won't even tell you who he is because I'm not being hateful. That, that's not a, this is not a hateful statement. I believe a lot of people can come off that way not meaning to. Amen. Uh, but he was saying, he said, man, he said, he's so una, unapproachable. Unapproachable. And can I tell you this, a pastor ought to be approachable to everybody in the building. But can I tell you, that don't just go with a pastor. That goes to everybody at the church. Amen. You can't have clicks in the church because clicks will kill the church. Amen. And hey, listen, I'm your friend. I'm everybody else's friend. Thanks to nobody. And I want to be everybody's friend that comes to Victor Bible Baptist Church. Amen. Visitors, I'm glad you're here today. I'm your friend. Amen. I'm glad y'all here tonight. I, I want to be a friend to everybody that walks in that back door back there. Amen. 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 I, I, listen, I, I don't want to be a church to where we don't go around and shake people's hands. Y'all ain't a church that, does, that doesn't do that. Amen. I, 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 believe, I, I believe our church is pretty good at doing that most of the time. Amen. And uh, I've not seen you where you ain't, but there may be a time you don't. Amen. I don't know. But, man, thank the Lord. We, we ought to be friendly. We ought to be friendly. We, we ought to make people feel like, man, I tell you, I, I went over to Victory. And about shook my hand off my arm. Amen. I mean, they, they just shook my hand the whole service. Amen. You know why? Because we, we ought to be friendly. We ought to be friendly people. Amen. And uh, we ought to be kind people. Amen. But listen to this, without, with, with, uh, it tells us not to be with respect to persons. It means partiality, favoritism. Uh, we ought not be a favor, favor, making favorites of different people. It tells us in verse 2, for if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and, good, and, and goodly apparel, there come, come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. By the way, gay clothing ain't talking about this day and time. Amen. Amen. By the way, gay back in meant happy, and it meant beautiful at this point. This actual, this actual part of this scripture is talking about a beautiful garment and happy garment. And listen, gay doesn't mean that no more. That means an abomination. That means wickedness. That means something God despises. He doesn't despise the people, but he despises the sin they live in. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But listen, it goes on and says this, the gay clothing, and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or, or, you can, or sit under my footstool. Telling the rich man, you man, get the best place. Find you a good spot at the church house. So, oh, you, you want to come and you ain't got no money? Well, just, I'll tell you what, stand over there. I'll tell you what, man, just sit, just sit in the floor over here. Amen. Sit in the floor. Amen. Just sit in the floor. Just, just find you a place in the floor somewhere to sit. Or stand on the side somewhere. And Lord help us, we ought not be partial like that or favoritism like that. And I don't think our church is that way, 
But we better watch out because the devil sure would luck to get luck to get us that way. Amen. But let's pray. And the Lord will help us for a little while. I want to preach on how do you deal with people. Father, I love you. God needs your help. God, I can't do anything tonight unless you help me. Not a thing. There ain't no, nothing in the world I can do. And we're just going down through the scriptures, Lord. We're just going down through your word, God, looking at the book of James. And I pray, dear God, that tonight you would change us, God. You would mold us. You'd make us what you want us to be, Lord. God, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. But as I look at this, James chapter 2, I wrote down two things that talks about the book of James. And a preacher named Rod Mattoon said this, and I wrote down both of his statements. I thought it was good. Uh, he, said, he said this about the book of James. He said, we need, we need to have a belief that behaves. We need to have a belief that behaves. And then he said, what a man believes is important, but how he behaves is important also. Amen. Amen. It's important to believe right, but it's important to act on what you believe. Amen. We better act on what we believe in. Amen. Well, if we're supposed to believe, we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. We need to act on what we say we believe. Amen. Amen. Lord, help us. No, no, you, you find, how do you deal with people? I, I look at, first of all, you find the command in verse number one of how to deal with people. He said, my brethren, first of all, let's save people he's talking to. He said, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Boy, the first statement he gives me and you is a command. Do not have favoritism. Do not have partiality. Amen. That man, you'll look at everybody around you with the same value and the same appreciation and the same respect as anybody else. Amen. I believe we know that. Well, that's the command. Verse, not only that, we find it's not only a, it's not just about the command, but the command is to the church. Amen. Look at verse number uh, one again. He said, "My brethren." So he wrote to save people. Verse two, he said, "For if there come unto your assembly," so now he's talking about the church. He's talking about saved people at the church. People that have been born again, saved by the grace of God. And I believe we could take time out and glorify God for being that. Amen. Amen. For being brethren, for being saved, for being part of the family. Amen. Amen. For he's talking about brethren at the church. Amen. Can I tell you, I've met some of the most sour people I've ever met in my life at church. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I've met some people who look like, look like they lived on the backside of the moon in 20 million shades of darkness, man, and sucking on a sour lemon all of their life. Uh, their lips dragging so low, every time they walk, they kick their lip, and their lips got rug burn right there on the front of it where it's drugged the ground for years. Amen. Listen, you know what Christians ought to be? The happiest people on the planet. Amen. Listen, we ought to be happy tonight. I ain't going to hell. That don't make me happy. That don't make you happy. If you're saved. You're going to heaven one day. That don't make us happy. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, we ought to be the happiest people on the earth, and we also ought to be the kindest people and the most compassionate people to everybody around us. But the sad thing is you go, to a, you go to a restaurant and you listen to some of them waiters and waitresses talk. They are sick of when churches come in on Sunday. You know why? They don't tip them. Had a guy one time, he told me, he said, he said when, I, when, I, when I don't get good service, I don't tip. And then he left a gospel track. I said, man, don't do that. That's useless. She's going to throw that away. He said, well, no, no, I, I, I never, I don't, listen, I'm telling you, that's going in the trash can. Right. Yeah. Amen. I'm just going to be honest with you. I tip whether it's good or bad. I tip if they don't fill my drink up. I tip food ain't good. You say, why? Because, man, at the end result, when I lay that gospel track down, I want them to read it. Amen. 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 I lay it down. Listen, I'm lay that gospel track. I want somebody to pick it up and read it. Hear the gospel. Be saved. Their life be changed. Amen. That's a whole lot more important than whether I got good food or not. A whole lot more important than whether I got my drink filled up when I want it filled up or not. Amen. And by the, by, by the way, drink means like Dr. Pepper or Diet Coke. Amen. Amen. Somebody told me one time, so what you mean by drink? Soda. Hello. Amen. Yeah. Dr. Pepper, Diet Coke, something like that. Amen. Amen. Or you can be like my wife and my, my, my daughter Maddie, and you can drink that wicked water if you want to, I guess. But anyway, 
Hey, I'm just kidding. Amen. Nothing wrong with water. I just don't like water. Amen. Melissa, how do you not like water? How do you not like the taste of water? I said, I don't know. I'll, I have to add something to it every time I drink water. Lord, help me. Y'all just need to pray for me. I'm a crazy person. I've been that way for a long time. Amen. And I probably ain't changing any time soon. Amen. Lord, help us. But anyway, the church is a place where there ought not be partiality. You remember going to high school? I, I'll be honest with you. Churches sometimes can become like a high school. You remember it was important that you had Hollister on. Important that you had American Eagle on. My mama was a, a single mama that loved me. Now, she did. She loved me. Well, I believe that with all my heart. But she didn't have a lot of money. But I remember, I remember Miss Tammy, I got hand-me-downs from hand-me-downs. That's not a lie. That's the truth. And, uh, man, I, by the time I got it, it's holy. And I don't mean righteous. I mean, I mean holy. Amen. I mean what I said the first time. I mean it's holy. Amen. Most of the time by I got by. And it wasn't cool to be holy. Now it's like you need to rip your pants to be cool. Back, back then it was not cool to be holy. Man, my pants be big tore right there. And they, wasn't, they was holy, Brother Randy. And it wasn't cool. Nobody else had them like that. Now, if I had them now, I'd have been the coolest guy in the school. Amen. But I, but I ain't. I wasn't. I was born the wrong time, I guess. But anyway, hey, listen. I, I'm just saying that to say this. You remember going to school and you had to have a certain kind of shoe or you just, man, you just, you just ain't that cool. I remember, I, remember, I remember when yo-yos become a big deal. And if you didn't have a Dunkin' yo-yo, you wasn't cool. You wasn't cool. If you didn't know how to hacky sack at, at break time at school, he just wasn't worth much. Amen. I mean, that's just true. At school, man, they, they, they'd gra- we'd gather around in a circle and we'd hacky sack. I mean, just, if you don't know what a hacky sack is, that's a little ball with beads all in it. Amen. We just kick that thing up in the air and, and one, one to another and play around the whole time. Amen. Just till, till they finally told us we had to go back and do that mess called school, you know. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, I, kind of like I asked them kids this morning, y'all, y'all enjoying school? No, no, I mean, <laughs> Lord help us. Anyway, I, but I, I, I tell you, man, there's a lot of churches become nothing more than high school, especially in maturity level, because they're worried about what somebody is doing, somebody, the, the social status of somebody instead of their religious standing, their Christianity standing. And that brings me where I'm at. But listen to what verse number two said. If there, if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment. That gold ring speaks of valuable, valuableness. Man comes in, and, and he, but you can tell that, that this man's got means. This man has got money. This man is, is very, very valuable financially. And it says this, it said, in goodly apparel. In goodly apparel. Then again, it says in verse 3, it says the gay clothing, which again, that means uh, beautiful and joyous. It means to look at it was delightful. It was beautiful, beautiful clothing that he wore to church. Probably sparkling. I don't know what it looked like, but it was beautiful. And this man comes into church. He said, you might have a man come into church with beautiful clothing, beautiful clothing valuable clothing. Well, then he gives the, gives, the, gives the comparison with the poor man. He said in verse 2, the last part, he said, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. Vile raiment. If you look up the word vile, it means worthless. It means worthless. This man comes in, you can tell he ain't got a dime. You watch this man come in, you can tell he don't have anything. He don't have any money. You can tell there's no way that he has any value financially to look at him. You know he has no means. He has no money. So you got two people. You got a man with a gold ring and, and beautiful clothing. And you got a man with vile raiment and worthless clothing. Worthless clothing. And the Bible's telling me and you how to treat both of them. Both of them. Because by the way, you also shouldn't favor it the poor man over the rich man. Amen. This ver- these verses are not telling me and you to tell all, all rich people, get out of here. Get out of church. Oh, man, you can't come here. Sit in the floor, rich man. <laughs> Sit in the floor, rich man. Stand over there, rich man. That, that is not what the Bible's saying. It's telling you not to have favoritism either way. 
Because it doesn't matter whether a man's got money or he doesn't have money. It doesn't matter if he's got good clothing or he don't have good clothing. Now listen, the fact is, if they come in church, they have value. Their life is valuable, amen. The Bible tells me, and you, the Lord dresses the, the grass of the field. And then he goes on to tell us how much more valuable are you. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, if the Lord counts you as more valuable than something he works on every single day of every single day of eternity or every single day of our life, then, man, I'm telling you, we're valuable to him. We're valuable to him. Listen to this. In fact, let me tell you how valuable you are tonight. The Bible said, Brother Jimmy, that our soul, our soul, if a man gained the whole world, lose his own soul. That's how valuable we are. Our soul is so valuable, more valuable than the entire world system. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Lust of the flesh is getting everything that you can have ever to satisfy your flesh. That's a big deal. Lust of the eyes is getting everything you look at. If you look at it, you can have it. Listen, there's nobody can live a life like that. that that's, that's, that's beyond thinking. You can't do it. Nobody can live like that. And listen, it says the pride of life. That means to raise to the top and the highest level that anybody's ever raised. Listen, that's pretty valuable to people. Raising to the top is valuable to people. Listen, getting everything you want that you look at is valuable to people. Having your flesh satisfied and amused and happy and joyous it, man, is, is, is very valuable to people. But can I tell you this? The Bible says you can have all three of those things, but more valuable than all three of those things is your eternal soul. Amen. And if somebody walks in church, I'm just telling you that this is not about poor or rich, but let me tell you, listen, if somebody walks in the back door of church and you can smell marijuana on their breath, can I tell you what they have? Value. Somebody walks in the back of the church and they got alcohol on their breath. And you say, Brother John, what about they, they have value. They have value. Jesus values their soul. Amen. Amen. Somebody comes into church and they act prideful and they don't even want to talk, talk, talk to anybody. Listen, if somebody comes in here, I'm talking about like somebody famous or whatever. Let me tell you something. They, say, they have value. They have value. Listen, I, I'm, sick, I'm sick of some parts of government, ain't you? But can I tell you what every single part of government has? Every single individual, they have a valuable soul. Every single one of them's got, got a valuable soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere. Amen. But when somebody comes into church, there ought to be, a, there ought to be a, a, a decision that we're not showing favoritism to anybody. But we love everybody the same. Amen. Lord, help us to be, to be that. And can I tell you, that, that's not always easy. Because sometimes it's easier to talk to some people than it is others. Yeah. Anybody agree? Yeah. Some people you see at the, at, the, at the supper table with your family, you know, when all the family comes around and friends come around, you're like, man, I can talk to him, but I can talk to him forever. Man, but then other people, you're like, oh, I'll make steer clear of that individual. Amen. Let me find me somewhere else to go. I ain't talking to that individual. Amen. Hey, listen, I'll tell you, man, we ought to have that. We ought to look at everybody with value. We ought to desire to be the same to everybody. Amen. The same friend, the same caring, compassionate Christian to everybody around us. Amen. Amen. Lord, help us. I'm going to be honest with you, that's, all, that's always, that's easy, sometimes easier preached than done. But we ought to live it. Lord, I live the preaching that we talk about. Amen. The clothing. Not only the clothing, but the, con the conducting. The conducting. Look at verse 3. Uh, not only you find, that you find the clothing both of them's got, got on, but you find the conducting, the, the leading, putting them in places. First of all, you find the per first place. Verse 3 said, For ye, and ye have rejected, or I'm sorry, and ye have respected, respect, sorry, to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. In a good place. Sir, we got you a good place right up front. Sir, sir, you sit right here. You are an honored guest today. We're so glad that you came. And listen, I'm not saying don't treat people that way. I'm just saying the poor man should have been treated the same way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He said, and say to the poor, stand thou there. Go, go over and stand up over there. You can stand there the whole service. Just stand over there for a while. And, or, or sit under my footstool. Boy, just sit down there on the ground somewhere. Just sit down for a while. 
Sit on the ground. We ain't got no place for you. Stand over there. Sit right here. Don't, 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 sit, on, don't sit in on these chairs. We got important people coming to fill them. You just sit in the floor. You stand over there one. Amen. That's, that's sad. That's sad. But the sad thing is, I, I hate to say this, but I promise you, I promise you, there are churches that are more partial to people that have money and wealth than people that have nothing. And I'm not saying that to bash the churches. I'm just saying that to say an honest, honest view of what goes on sometimes. But can I tell you, that's not how Christianity ought to be. Every, everybody ought to be treated the same. Listen, church, I, I know this is something we practice already. I believe that anyway. I believe our church practices this. But I'm going to tell you, if we're not careful, we can always get the place of favoritism. We can always get the place of partiality. We can always get the place of being a respect of persons with people. We can't be that. We can't be that. Amen. The Bible tells us the gospel is a whosoever will gospel. Anybody that wants to be saved can be saved. So we need to treat every individual with the same compassion as anybody else. Amen. 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 Listen to this. Not only find the conducting, but we find the characterization. Characterization is found in verse number four. Are, are you not the impartial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? So if you have a thought in your mind of raising one individual above another individual, you've had an evil thought. That's what Scripture says. That's not what I say. It's what the Bible said. If you, if you in your mind think higher of one individual than you do another at the house of God, listen, the fact is, the truth is, you've had an evil thought. Amen. We've had an evil thought. He said in verse 9, listen to this, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced the law is transgressors. Not only have you had an evil thought, you've sinned against a holy God. I've sinned against a holy God. If I've had a thought and I've acted on that thought on top of that and showed partiality to certain people over other certain people, then I have had an evil thought and I have sinned against the Lord by showing partiality and favoritism. Look in the Bible tonight. Sometimes you get home. Look, look in the Bible at some of the, some of the people that had favoritism. We talked about Jacob and Esau. Look how that home busted up. Jacob had to leave. Esau then left to chase after Jacob to kill him. I mean, it busted up a home. If you look in the Bible over in the book of Philippians, there's two people that are, that are at odds against one another. And, and listen, it's because of favoritism. Some wanted this one to do it, some wanted that one to do it. And it almost can bust up a church. Yeah. Now, I tell you, you can ruin a church by favoritism. Amen. You can absolutely ruin the church by favoritism. But you can bless the church by not showing respect to persons. You can be a blessing to the house of God by not showing a respect of persons. Because we really just get right down to it. Ain't none of us anything but a bunch of dirt balls in the first place. Listen, you wasn't made out of gold. God didn't scoop up gold and mold you and make you beautifully. No, he didn't. He took dirt. Dirt. He took the dust of the earth. Amen. You say, boy, I am so amazed. Boy, I was amazingly made. with No, no, you wasn't. You was made with dirt. In fact, you just made with lower than dirt. Only thing I know good about dust is you can choke on it, and that ain't good. Ain't nothing good about dust, but you just made out of it. I was made out of it. We're sitting here clothed in an earthen vessel out of dirt. So really, ain't nobody's dirt no better than nobody else's dirt. <laughs> My dirt ain't better than your dirt. Your dirt might even be dark. Somebody's dirt might be darker than my dirt. That don't make me no better than them or them no better than me. It's all dirt. Amen. What's it really matter what color dirt somebody is? Amen. I ain't never worried about the dirt when I walk on it. I mean, it's just dirt. It's dirt. It's the same thing everywhere. I don't worry about people's skin color either because all we are is all dirt. We're all made out of one blood, one race. Amen. The human race. That's what it is. Amen. All made out of dirt. It's like, it's like, brother, 
I try to remember his name. What does the answers in Genesis over there, but that Ken Ham's what his name was. Ken Ham said this. He said, we sing that song, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. That, that really ain't true state. That really ain't true song. Because ain't nobody really red. Ain't nobody really yellow. Ain't nobody really, ain't nobody really white. I mean, I know some albino people. They still ain't white as that sheet of paper right there, though. But I'm telling you, ain't, most people ain't that color. They just different, color, different shades of brown. He said, be more accurate to sing uh, Jesus loves the little children of the world. He said, uh, uh, the brown and brown and brown and brown, all the brown and brown, <laughs> all the brown people of the world. <laughs> amen. We're all brown. Amen. Somebody said brown people. That's all of us. That's all of us. Different shades of brown dirt. That's what we all are. Amen. I know. You probably didn't come here that night, did you? Amen. Y'all, y'all come here saying, Brother John, why? I sure want to know I was dirt. I mean, I, I know you probably didn't want to know that night, but you are. I said, boy, I, I didn't really want to know I was dirt. Well, it did do you good to remember that. Do me good to remember that. Amen. About the time I go thinking I am somebody, and I go realizing, boy, you, you just made out of stuff people choke on. Dust. <laughs> you made from the dust of the earth. You ain't nothing but dirt. <laughs> Oh, boy, I tell you, that knocks you down a peg, amen. Knocks me down a peg. Listen to this. We, uh, the, the characteristic is this. It, it characterizes and it tells us what the truth of it, the matter is, is when you have a thought of partiality and a thought of favoritism, it's an evil thought. And when you have a thought of favoritism and partiality, respect to persons, you've got a sinful thought. Sinful thought. But not only that, I'm going to give you this. Verse 5, verse 5, we see the comparison that's given. The comparison. Look at verse 5. Listen to what it said. It said, hearken, my beloved brethren. And you know what I like about this verse? He is telling them and kind of rebuking them to make sure they don't get involved in favoritism or partiality. But he treats them with compassion. Can I tell you what preaching ought to be? Preaching should be hard. Preaching should be convicting. Preaching should deal with your heart and your life. But it ought to be done in love. Amen. As it said, my dearly beloved. It meant something to him. These people were, he, he loved them. He was telling them the truth, but he loved them. Amen. Preaching will be done in love. Amen. He said, hath not God chosen the poor of this world? Bob wrote down this. First of all, the comparison is this. They might be poor, but they've been chosen. What he's saying is they've been saved. They've been washed in the blood of Christ. They're going to heaven when they die. They've been born again. They might not have no money, but they've been saved. Amen. They might have a dime to their name, but they have been chosen by God. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm not saying God chooses certain people and doesn't choose other people, but God chooses all people. God chose all people. God chose anybody who wants to be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. He chose every man, every woman, every boy, every girl to be saved. And since he did, listen, if you ain't got a dime to your name tonight, you are valuable because your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. There's not a greater place for it to be written. Amen. I read where George Bush got excited when he got to the presidential, when he got to be president and he got in that Oval Office and he saw his name on that desk. It said, Mr. Bush or whatever it said, or President Bush. But he got excited because on that desk of the president of the United States, he wrote down in his biography, he said, my name had reached the highest place it will ever reach. Well, I got news for George Bush. That ain't true. Amen. Hey, have you got your name written in the Lamb's Book of life. You got it wrote in the highest place it could ever be wrote in. Amen. There's not a better place or higher place to ever be wrote than the last book of life. Amen. Well, I'm glad of that, ain't you? I'm glad I was chosen. In fact, the Bible says you didn't choose him. He chose you. Amen. Now, you got to choose him back, but he chose you first. Amen. He decided to save you first. You got to make a decision. You got to put faith and trust in Christ. But He come after you before you ever even thought about Him. Amen. Oh man, Amen. Hath God hath not God chosen the poor of this world? The poor of this world. He chose poor people. God God chose poor people. He's also chose rich people. Amen. 
Listen, in Luke 16, the rich man goes to hell, the poor man goes to heaven, but the rich man don't go to hell because he's rich, and the poor man don't go to heaven because he's poor. poor man goes to heaven because he knows Jesus Christ, and the, and the rich man goes to hell because he didn't know Jesus Christ. That's it. Amen. Listen, it's not about whether they were poor or whether they were rich. It's that they've been saved and chosen. Amen. And by the way, everybody's been chosen. Amen. Up to us will we accept it. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? You look at a rich man tonight. Amen. Elon Musk eats your heart out. Elon Musk wishes he was as rich as I was tonight. Elon Musk wishes he was as rich as you were tonight. Listen, I wouldn't mind having some earthly riches like Elon Musk. I'm telling you, I got more riches in glory than he could ever imagine. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you, I, he, couldn't even, he couldn't even do nothing compared to what I've got in glory. Amen. I'm telling you. And listen, by his own testimony, he don't trust Christ. He don't believe the gospel. He's never been saved. Amen. So I say that to say this. Man, I've got riches in glory that far outweigh the world. Amen. Don't you? If you're saved, you do. Man, that man has a gold ring on that's coming into the church house, and they're showing respect to that man and giving him the best seat in the house. Can I tell you what that poor man's going to do when he dies? He's going to walk on gold. That's more pure than the gold the man's got on his finger in the first place. Amen. And that raiment that that man had on, I about to enjoy this, and I wasn't even thinking about this. Amen. Brother Jimmy, better than that garment that man's wore in when that poor man dies and goes to glory. Hey, the Bible said we're going to be robed in white robes, and that'll outshine that man gay clothing and outside that beautiful clothing we're going to be glorified amen with him amen amen boy I hadn't even thought about that man that, that's good right there amen mm, 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 mm. again it's not about rich it's not about poor but it's about trusting Christ and if you've trusted Christ we've been chosen we got riches in glory by faith Rich, is in faith, rich in faith, he said, and then he said, heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him. But I got to read the word heir. Heir means to get everything somebody has when they die. But God ain't going to die. But then, then I thought about, well, that means we don't ever get it. No, it don't mean that because the Bible says later on, it says joint heirs. But Randy, <laughs> joint heirs. Amen. That means I did get it because when Jesus got it, I got it. Amen. 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 Heaven's mine. Heaven's mine, along with the Lord. I mean, I get to be there. I mean, I own property and glory. Amen. I feel like a preacher said when he got saved, he said, I got saved. And it's like God cut out two acres of glory and shoved it down in my soul. Amen. I agree. I feel like I got real estate living on the inside right now. Amen. Uh, something that the Holy Ghost just said, hey, take this for a while. And later on, when you get to glory, you'll get the rest of it. Amen. I'm just saying this, boy, I, I am glad to know they ain't about poor, it ain't about rich. It's about being chosen, about being rich in faith, and it's about being an heir with God. Amen. Now, when I say we're an heir with God, I don't mean we take over God's ability or God's authority or God's power or God's righteousness or God, uh, who God is. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying we get in on it. Amen. We get in on it. Amen. We get to have a place in glory. Amen. The Bible said we got mansions in heaven. He said, Brother John, well, I think it's rooms. Well, Jesus said, if it were not so, I would have told you. If it wasn't mansions, I would have told you it wasn't mansions, but the Bible said there's mansions. Amen. Amen. Billy Kelly going through, going through the Baltimore, going through the uh, Biltmore estate. And he saw that big, they, they took him and showed him all the stuff. You know, they got like a bowling alley. They got all kinds of crazy mess in there. All, all kinds of stuff in there. It's huge. So they take him down through there, and they got to tell him, said, uh, Brother John, they told him, said, that, that couch right there goes back to Louis III. He said, that ain't nothing. He said, I got one goes back to Sears on the 5th. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, but he walked through that place. He old country, country preacher, man. He, he said, he walked through there, and somebody asked him later on, said, what you think about the Biltmore State? Wasn't it amazing? Boy, wasn't it blow your mind? Look at that. He said, yeah. He said, but I got thinking about that when I got home. He said, you know, in heaven, that wouldn't make a good lean-to. Amen. He said, heaven, that wouldn't even make a good lean to. I agree. I agree. Amen. I agree. In fact, the walls are made of jasper, Brother Randy. 
Bible said the gates made of several pearl. That don't mean a bunch of them. That means individual pearls make up every individual gate. Amen. That may, listen, and listen, if you thought that pearl was big, you ought to saw the oyster come out of. Amen. But anyway, boy, that big old oyster made that gate. I mean, there was a uh, there was a pearl made out of that, uh, or a gate made out of that humongous pearl. I'm not saying it was an oyster, but I'm just kidding about that. But anyway, this, that, that was made out of pearl. And the walls are jasper. The, gold, the, the, the floor down here, the cheapest thing you walk on is dirt. Up there, the cheapest thing you walk on is gold. Right. Amen. Right. Cheapest thing you ever walk on is gold. Amen. We're going to be in fine raiment. We're going to have a marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeah. You say, when did I say my marriage vows? At an altar one night when you got saved by the good grace of God. Amen. That night I told him, say, Lord, I need you. God, I want you to save me. Oh, he did. It. Boy, he joined me with himself that very night. Amen. He put, he put me in the family. Put you in the family. Listen to this, verse 6. But you have, you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by the which ye are called. Boys, you read that. There's a lot of people who will be good to rich people hoping to get gain from rich people. It, it, they'll even get... They'll even get cussed out, beat up. I mean, I'm not talking beat up, but just, just beat down spiritually just to try to befriend somebody that's rich so they can hopefully get something out of them or get some form of popularity from them. But that's not the way Christianity ever was meant to work. Amen. Not the way it was ever meant to work. Amen. That's just not the way it is. It's not the way it is. Listen, I, I tell you, we're going down through this verse, and this is what it's saying. If you, if you fulfill the, the royal law, you say, why is it a royal law? Because the king said it, Jesus. The royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Yep. If you don't want to get treated bad, don't treat others bad. Amen. If you don't want people to talk bad to you, don't talk bad to them. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, you don't want somebody fussing at you, don't fuss at somebody else. Amen. 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 I tell you, we ought, we ought to be people that live right and do right. Man, we ought to treat others like we want to be treated. Amen. God help us to do that. He said, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin, they're convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one, one point, he is guilty of all. For, the, for he, that say, he that said doth uh, do not commit adultery, I said also do not kill now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So he's telling us this, that one sin makes you sinful. Amen. One sin makes you sinful. It don't take a bunch of them. Adam and Eve didn't commit a big long list of sins to plunge humanity in the depths of sin. They committed one sin. And by the way, they didn't commit a sin of drinking alcohol. They didn't commit a sin uh, of sleeping around. They didn't commit a sin uh, uh, of smoking dope or cussing or blaspheming. They didn't do that. You know what they did? They ate of a piece of fruit that God told them not to eat of. So that sin plunged humanity into sin. I tell you, it, does, it don't take one sin to make you a sinner. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, gave me and you a sin nature. But on top of that, we sin, and if we've done one sin... It already makes us wicked. It don't take a bunch of them. It just takes one. I've heard people say, well, I can't believe God just let God would just, and God would just stop, just say, man, you, you committed one sin. Now you're doomed for hell. You're doomed for eternity. Can I tell you this? First, you want to tell you why we don't believe that? Why people fuss about that? They don't realize the holiness of God. They don't realize the holiness of God. They're looking at that, and I'm looking at that. Most of the, we, we do this. We look at it from a sinful humanity standpoint. We don't look at it from a holy God who has no sin, who has never sinned, who has never thought a bad thought, never done a bad deed, never said a bad word, never went to a bad place, never acted in a bad way. So he can't stand sin. Because he's holy. And in fact, if there wasn't a covering in Jesus Christ, you couldn't live in glory anyway. I couldn't either. Because our sinfulness, we couldn't stand before a holy God. Amen. Listen to this and I'm done. I got to look at the comparison. Let me give you this. I see the, I see the celebration. 
a celebration. Look at verse number 12. So speak ye and so do as they, they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. What, what law of liberty? That Bible, this Bible. You say, what am I going to be judged by when I get to heaven? This Bible. The Word of God. Yeah. Amen. I've, I've heard preachers say, you know, they try to, try to explain things. Well, I've heard Christians say, boy, I, they, they say, man, it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. And the scripture is very clear that it's wrong to do it. But they try to give a loophole and say, boy, it's all right to do this or it's okay to do that. And it's, it's all right to do, man, it's all right to drink a little bit of liquor, man, as long as you just do it socially. It's not a big deal. The scripture said not to even look upon wine, not even look at the cup, amen, when it's been fermented, not even drink a bit of it, amen. That's Bible. It's Bible. So it doesn't matter what the preacher says. No matter what other Christians say. I'm not judged by that on judgment day. And I'm not talking about judged whether you go to heaven or hell. I'm talking about judged according to our life as a Christian. Amen. Glorifying God. And life down here too. Amen. Because he'll chastise us. For he shall, listen to this, verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy. That has, that has showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Can I tell you this? When you don't have any mercy toward anybody else's bad decisions they make, you don't have any mercy toward anybody else's position in life and what's going on in their life and their heart, and you, man, they mess up, they fail, and you just, you just push them down further and stomp them harder, man. You just, you just try your best to kick them down the ground harder, best you can. It's coming back to you. It's coming back to you. It's a boomerang. It'll come back, and it'll come back with no mercy. It'll come back with no mercy. But you know what I'm glad of? But I, I, I want to I be that mercy that rejoiceth. I want to be mercy that can rejoice the judgment seat and say, boy, Lord, I, listen, I had mercy on so-and-so. I, I had mercy on this. I had mercy on that. I want to be able to say I had mercy on people. You know, why I, you know why I try to be merciful to people? I'm not sometimes, but you know why I try to be? The honest truth is because I need mercy. I need mercy. I believe if you come on piano, I'm done. I remember when I first got saved. Boy, I struggled so hard just trying to do right. I've been so busy living for the devil with all of my heart that I, I, it was a struggle to try to do right. I listen to preaching every night. I do it now too, but I listen to preaching every night before I went, I went to bed. I, I listen to hard preaching. Some of that preaching probably, probably, was, probably was a little bit different. Boy, they preached against hairspray. They preached against everything. I ain't for all that, but can I tell you this? Boy, I need hard preaching. I want somebody to preach to me. I don't live like the devil. I live like the world. I live like the flesh. But I live, that, I live to fulfill anything that I desired to do. When I got saved, Miss Dorothy, I wanted to live different. I wanted to live different. Boy, I got struggling, and man, I, I, I tried best to do what was right, and I wanted to live right, and I wanted to do right. I'd slip up here or slip up there, and, and I'm not talking about big things, just stuff that really, I'm not even talking about going back to drugs, nothing like that, but I'm just talking about just things, just slipping up. I'm trying to do better. But I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for some Christians that love me, that loved me, sincerely loved me. Boy, I, I was sitting there trying to, I, I read my Bible. I, I'd pray. I'd go to church. Brother Tony, I, I, I went to some, I went to a, it was a Christian concert. It really was. But man, the guy got to tell me what all was really going on with some of that some of that guy that was singing, and and I just didn't know. I just I just didn't know. I try to be easy with people because I know what it's like to not know, and just want to know something. I was dumb as a stick. I know anything about the Bible or church. I just trying to learn. Boy, little by little, them Christians would gather around me, pray with me, love me, try to help me. That preacher, I'd ask him all the time, I said, Preacher, is this wrong? He finally blew around. He got so, I don't think he got tired of it, but he did, he did finally just tell me, he said, if you got to ask a question, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. And it wasn't nothing some of y'all would say, well, I can't believe you even asked that. It, it wasn't really a big deal, but it's just something I wanted to know. I want, Preacher, I need to know. I want to live right. I want to live right. Well, can I tell you this evening, ain't, ain't you glad when people had mercy on you? Had mercy on you in your life. When you're going through a struggling time in your life and a hard time in your life, ain't it been a blessing when somebody slid up beside you at an altar and prayed with you? 
Ain't it been a blessing when you was getting ready to leave church and you felt discouraged and depressed and down and out and somebody uh, come up beside you, put your arm around you and said, hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. I believe it's going to be all right. I believe the Lord's going to help you through this. I believe it's going to be okay. I just want you to know I care about you. I'm praying for you every day. Ain't nothing like that in the whole world. But I want to have mercy. I want to have compassion. Don't you? If you will, if you stand to your feet, eyes closed, head bass, what God's